So after losing his mother, um, the last thing Anakin, or the last person I should say Anakin really has that, um, you know, loves him unconditionally and that, you know, he loves unconditionally is Padme. Um, so, you know, in this foreign world, and uh, it's maybe a little less foreign now that he's an adult, um, but, you know, in this world, I guess you could say where he's constantly judged, he's constantly ridiculed, he's constantly um, measured, you know, he he finds Padme, who is the one person he can just be with and not have to worry about any of that stuff. Um, so moving forward to episode three, uh, Anakin's a bit more, a bit older, a bit more mature at this point, and um, he's a bit more entrenched in the Jedi ways. Um, he's less rebellious than he was in episode two. Uh, however, you know, one night he has a prophetic dream about uh, Padme dying in childbirth. So, you know, even even though he's a bit more mature, even though he's more entrenched in the Jedi Council now, um, you know, Padme has become the most important thing in his life. It's, she's become the most important person in his life. Um, and Emperor Palpatine, um, who obviously is Darth, you know, is Darth Sidious in disguise for people that don't, you know, haven't watched it, the uh, prequel. Um, he sees this and is able to manipulate Anakin um, based on, you know, his, based on his want of Padme, based, based of, off his need of ha having Padme in his life. Um, and I think Anakin, um, you know, people will say, why did he do this? You know, why did he turn? Um, you know, just imagine being in Anakin's shoes. Imagine, you know potentially losing the one person left in this world that you genuinely love and care about um and that loves you unconditionally and that doesn't judge you um just that just loves you for you that this is the last person in this world that he genuinely you know cares about i mean obviously he cares about obi-wan and if you know some other you know in the jedi council i guess you could say to an extent but she is his number one priority and he's afraid to lose he's afraid to lose her um so he does whatever he he can and in doing so doing whatever he can he's easily he's easily manipulated by Sidious um to the point where eventually eventually he actually ends up losing her anyway she ends up dying anyway but Anakin has already gone down this this path where um, he's turned on the Jedi Council. Um, he's just, you know, obviously he's, you know, been mutilated by Obi-Wan in their duel. Um, and, you know, there's no going back for him at this point, um, you know, in his transformation into Darth Vader. Um, you know, and we'll, I'll make another video, video on Vader, but Vader, um, you know, Anakin, you know, with everything being taken away from him and with how, um everything ended with him in the Jedi Council he's consumed by this rage and this hate uh and this hate is the only thing that keeps him going um you know which creates this character of Darth Vader this ruthless um this ruthless villain you know that's uh you know we'll talk about I'll talk about in greater detail in a, in another video um but yeah, I mean, one one more thing about Anakin and his duel with Obi Wan. Um, you know, not only is not only is it saving Padme, but um, you know, him gaining all of this power. You know, of learning the dark side of the Force. Um, you know, he becomes so consumed with himself that um, you know his ego. His ego. I mean, when when Obi Wan has the high ground and literally all An like Anakin he's in a position where he can kind of, you know, f live to fight another day, um, or just, you know, not do what he ended up doing, which is, you know, doing this, you know, doing the, you know, trying to jump over Obi-Wan and, you know, stab him in the back. Um, and Obi-Wan ends up cutting him down. 